Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party figure review. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the DJ Custom T'Challa clothing set or as they call it the Wakandan costume set but everyone knows exactly who this is supposed to be. Now I've been very excited to take a look at this piece all the way back since when they first announced it and we saw that Hot Toys figure that we knew we wouldn't be getting. However we did actually get the throne so of course this is now going to be taking pride of place in the Black Panther shelf sitting on top of that Hot Toys throne, which is really just icing on the cake, in my opinion. Now, DJ Custom is a company that made a couple of other clothing sets from back in the day. They've actually also just most recently produced the racing suit set for Tony Stark from Iron Man 2, and I was really impressed with the quality on that piece, and hopefully this T'Challa outfit set is equally as good, if not better, than that one there. Now, there were a few complications I've heard, because the Hot Toys head sculpt is unfortunately seated really low in terms of where the ball joint socket is, so they had to do a few modifications to how the body works in order to make this look just right. However, with a little bit of fussing, I think you can get this looking pretty darn near perfect. Now, this is going up with Philip Liu from Toys Wonderland HK. If you'd like to pick up your very own, the link is down in the description below. And he also has a third-party T'Challa head sculpt if you don't have the Hot Toys one, but you'd still like a T'Challa in your collection. And the link for that will be down in the description below as well. Now, if you do like looking at these third party figures and also hot toy stuff really early why not subscribe to the channel because it's a hell of a lot more stuff coming your way either way what we're gonna do now is get all of the bits and pieces that come with this set out here and take a look at everything it comes with now as you'd expect being a third party clothing set he doesn't come with a hell of a lot of stuff you're getting the body you're getting the outfit hands and of course let's take a look at the royal sandals of course what are those the iconic line from the movie here we have the sandals themselves now they've done something very, very interesting. They've used just a generic foot in terms of how they've actually done it. They haven't sculpted it. They've used a generic foot and put a leather or pleather style appliance over the top, which means that you can actually get some flex and some articulation out of the sandals. Completely unnecessary and completely unexpected. I didn't expect them to actually do this. I thought this was going to be one sculpted piece, but I actually do appreciate being able to move the toes just a little bit. Now, would I have rather this being a sculpted and properly painted piece? Absolutely. You can see a ginormous seam line down the front and you can see the articulation for the toes. However, this is totally fine in my opinion. If this is the reason why they were actually able to produce it, save some costs on the actual generic body and just do the leather appliance for the sandal, I'm totally on board with that. This is a really good way of giving us the royal sandals. Now, in terms of the actual hands themselves, as you can see, he only comes with one fist, which is a little bit disappointing because you can't really put him in that iconic Wakanda forever sort of pose with his arms crossed. He only comes with one. As I said, a little bit frustrating, but you know, that's not really the end of the world. I'm sure you have some ganghood 1.0 style hands lying around that we could easily use for this figure. Now, in terms of the skin tone itself, it's painted rather nicely. However, it is a little bit different in terms of the color scheme to the body itself. The body is just a generic base plastic body and it's not actually meant to be all that visible at all. So I am actually totally fine with them not matching the color of the hands to the body because as I said, it's not actually meant to be visible. Now, taking a look at his other accessory, the final accessory being his little Kamoyo beads. I actually prefer these to the Hot Toys ones. They're a real metal appliance. They are on a stretchy little chain. So I do prefer these, as I said, to the Hot Toys one. They don't have the little printed details in the front, but I'm totally fine with that. Now, if you do have the Black Panther figure and you do want to have him holding this spear, it is good, I guess, that he does come with this hand because you can wedge this in there and then have him holding the little spear in his hand as you would expect. So it's good. It doesn't come with this piece. It would have been nice if it did come with something similar. But if you do have this, you can definitely use it with this set. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the clothing set and the figure himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have the clothing set itself and prepare yourself, you're about to see something very unsightly there it is. As you can see, there's a significant gap in the neck. And when we punch in to take a closer look at the details, I'm going to explain as to why. Now, there is a very interesting reason why that is the case. As I said, I'll explain it in just a second. But taking a look at the overall proportions, how the head sits on the body from the front, this looks really good. This, of course, is T'Challa in his royal outfit from the movie. They've nailed the tailoring. They've nailed the drape of the fabric. And I think when we pop him in the throne, this is really really going to come together quite nicely. But as I said, that gap is very unsightly, especially if you're having this figure displayed
displayed from the side. So I do think this was specifically designed to go in the Wakandan throne. Either way, what we're going to do now is punch in and take a closer look at the outfit itself. Now, as you can see from the front, this looks perfectly fine in my opinion, but as soon as you start to rotate it to the side, there is that unsightly gap. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Justin, there is no reason as to why you can justify that. Well, I'm about to try. So the reason for this is they've used a generic style body and a generic style neck peg. Now, the Hot Toys head sculpt, if anyone has tried to put this on the Civil War Black Panther, you'll immediately know what I'm talking about. The ball socket inside the head sculpt is way lower than any normal Hot Toys head sculpt, which means when you put it on, it sits really, really high up. And there is always a gap under the uh, bottom of the head sculpt right there. Now, they've done that because the chin extends all the way down. And say what you will about the design of the head sculpt. But the chin extends all the way down. So they had to include that gap in order to actually make sure it doesn't rub against the outfit. However... DJ Custom should have included a spacer piece to fill out that gap or even a custom neck that was a little bit longer. They didn't do that and I'm still totally fine with it because from the front, I think it looks really, really good. Now you will be having him probably in the throne or I don't think you're going to have him displayed like this anyway unless of course you would like to do that. So I mean... 90% of the time, it's not going to be an issue at all. It's just if you're sort of displaying him like this, that you're going to see that little gap in the neck. But from the front, as I said, it's going to be perfectly reasonable in terms of having him on the display. Now, I've addressed the gap in the neck. Let's move on to the outfit itself. When you get this out of the box, make sure you pull down on the outfit and then pull back on the neck. That'll mean that you can see a little bit more of the neck, which does color match to the head sculpt rather nicely, if I do say so myself. Now, a couple of people have said the head is a little bit out of proportions with the body. I don't actually see that. I think it looks pretty good on display. The body is quite natural in terms of how it sits compared to the size of the head sculpt. I think this works really well. Now let's take a look at this really intricate detailing on the outfit. I'm pretty sure this is all sort of screen printed on there. It's really nice and really intricate. They have definitely nailed all the little patterning on the outfit itself, all the way down to the little flaps that are on the back, much like an old school sort of tuxedo with the flaps hanging down. Now all of this detailing extends down to the actual uh, end of the sleeves there. I don't know why I got hung up on that there, but it looks really, really good. It's a very basic black and silver outfit, but it was in the film as well. And I definitely think this works for a T'Challa figure quite nicely. Of course, now that Hot Toys isn't doing it. Now, the only thing that I'd like for DJ Custom to do next, if they are going to be continuing this sort of Black Panther range, is that outfit that we saw in the Hot Toys Black Panther figure that was sitting on top of the throne with the blue sort of sash on the front of the robes. And of course, Fix that darn neck gap, DJ Custom. I know you get away with it this first time because you're rushing to get this out. But for the second time, you've got time to fix a spacer piece or fix the neck a little bit, do a custom neck or something just to make sure this sits on there a little bit better in terms of the side view. Panning the camera down to look at the feet. As you can see, the rest of the outfit's just more of a generic style pant and it does really work for the outfit. It's pretty much in keeping with what we've seen from the royal robes in the movie. It's more of a basic sort of flowing plastic and it works just fine. It's really light, so it does flow quite nicely. Now, as you can see, just sitting naturally, it sort of covers up the top of that foot anyway. So all of those complaints that I did have with it being a generic foot are kind of washed away a little bit because you can't see most of them. All you can see are the toes, which are sculpted quite nicely anyway. As I said, all of that stuff at the top there, the seam line and everything is completely hidden. So I don't really think that me personally, I don't think I can justify them going out and spending money on sculpting and painting a new set of feet when they did this and and it works just fine anyway. So this is perfectly okay in my opinion. Now I didn't show this on the upper part of the outfit, but as you can see, the Kamoyo beads sit really nicely around the wrist and they do cover up that joint quite nicely. So all of those sort of ugly joints are getting hidden by the outfit. You can't see any joints here, there, or even down on the feet pretty much. So I'm very impressed with what DJ Custom has done with this overall set. Now getting started with our side-by-side -side comparisons, this is gonna be sort of a review and a comparison video. I don't think that DJ Custom set really warrants a full-on comparison video, so we may as well do it right here. Either way, starting with the oldest of the bunch first, here is the Civil War version of Black Panther alongside this new T'Challa clothing set. As you can see, it's a completely different style of body. He is super buff, super broad. I actually think this is the BVS Superman body underneath, and that's why he's got so much bulk. But if someone was to tell you the guy on the left is the guy on the right, you wouldn't believe them at all. 
Marvel. There is a complete difference in terms of the bulk between the two characters. Of course, they changed the design completely when they went to the Black Panther solo movie, so we may as well get that one out here. Now here we have the solo movie version of Black Panther alongside the DJ custom clothing set. As you can see, the physique matches, in my opinion, a little bit more between the two. They've slimmed him down a little bit, given him a little bit more definition, and that means that the bulk that we saw on the previous one is really not seen here, which means, as I said, these two match a little bit more closely, which I really do appreciate. There is a little bit of height, however, added between the actual Black Panther suit and the DJ custom set, because it's using just a generic body. That means, though, when you bring out Shuri, you're going to see a little bit less of a height discrepancy between the two figures. Now, of course, I did a height comparison between the two, and I actually got the heights of the actor and the actress who played T'Challa and Shuri, respectively, and it turns out that there's probably a 3 to 4 percent height increase on Black Panther and a 3 to 4 percent height decrease on Shuri. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy, but of course you can't exactly match the shoes they are wearing. They could have been wearing platform shoes, just like Robert Downey Jr. did in Iron Man. So there is a element of not being able to perfectly match it to what we see on screen. However, in terms of the height of the actress and the actor that played those two characters, they are pretty much on point. Either way, enough about my rant. I'm going to get Shuri out here and continue the comparisons. And here we have the comparison that I know a lot of people have been waiting for. As you can see, the height discrepancy isn't actually that big anymore between these two characters. I think this is just about right. Of course, if you move the legs closer together on Shuri and also straighten her neck, she will even become a little tiny bit taller, which I don't think is actually all that necessary because in my opinion, this looks just about right. So these two on the same shelf will be absolutely awesome to add to your Wakandan team because as I said, these two look truly spectacular standing side by side. Moving on to our final side by side comparison. Here we have T'Chaka standing next to his son. And in my opinion, these two look absolutely phenomenal together. It's something about the royal sort of robes and the fact that they're both wearing the black pants that it just works so well. They play so well off one another. Now, of course, I'm hoping that a third party company actually goes ahead and makes a head sculpt based off the actor who played T'Chaka in the movie. That would complement, as I said, complement these two so very nicely. Now, of course, it's not really canonically correct to have them standing side by side. So you could actually pose T'Chaka behind this T'Challa figure like he's sort of passing on the mantle of Black Panther to his son. There are so many different displays that you could work out with this royal Wakandan family that I think would look really awesome on display. Just wrapping up on this DJ custom clothing set for the T'Challa figure. I have to say, what better way to wrap up this video than have him sitting on the Wakandan throne that I've been blabbering on about for this entire review. This is the sole reason why I wanted to pick this figure set up in the first place, and they killed it. This looks utterly amazing. It looks just like the clothing set that we saw from Hot Toys. Obviously, it's a little bit different in terms of the actual robes. There was a blue sort of overlay on top, and it was a little bit more gray, but this is the same vein as what Hot Toys were going for. And finally, we have a proper T'Challa to sit in the Wakandan throne. This is without a doubt the best way to display this figure, in my opinion. Now, I know a couple of you are probably thinking, Justin, you're totally incorrect. That neck gap is unsightly. I wouldn't display that in my collection in a thousand years. And that's totally fine. Figures are subjective. That's completely up to you. But for me, this display is well worth it. He looks so damn good sitting in that Wakandan throne alongside the rest of the team from Black Panther. As I said, this is the way that I'm going to be displaying him in my collection, and I would advise that you do so as well, because it really does get the most out of this figure. This truly is an amazing set. Now, do I hope that DJ Custom goes back, rectifies the issue with the neck, and potentially does a second outfit? Totally. I really hope that they go ahead and do that. But if they don't, I'm going to be perfectly happy with what we've gotten here, because this, as I said, is a really awesome way to display your head sculpt that we got with the Black Panther figure, because mine, up until very recently, was just sitting in a box. But now, finally, it will take pride of place in my collection on the Black Panther shelf. Either way, this DJ Custom clothing set is in stock right now with Philip Liu from Toys Wonderland HK, and the link for that will be down in the description below. You can also pick up the Wakandan Throne, and you can also pick up a third-party head sculpt if you don't actually have the Black Panther figure, and you'd still like to have a T'Challa in your collection. Links all down in the description below. Also, check out any of the Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home pre-orders on Philip's website. 
Also check out Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, and see what's coming up next on the channel. Also check out our brand new second channel, Justin and Steph, that Mrs. Collection and I have started. We're sharing a whole lot of videos, vlogs, videos on our adventures, and also upcoming travel stuff, including New York Comic Con. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Link is down in the description below once again. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.